Hello and welcome to Game Guru Max live broadcast, broadcast number four. My name is Lee Bamba from the Game Creators and I'm happy to share with you yet more progress on the development of Game Guru Max. And I've got a couple of things I'd like to share. First thing you'll notice is that we skip completely with the sound test. We just moved straight into exactly 4pm and you've noticed I've spruced up my visuals and audio a touch. I hope you like it and more importantly I hope it worked. So I'm just going to jump straight in with an introduction along the lines of how this format is going to work. I have merely 15 minutes to say everything I need to say and then switch the off button. I have not succeeded in uh, three previous broadcasts, so let's see if we can hit 15 minutes on the dot this time. I'm going to ask some, uh, answer some questions at the end. I've got a couple of minutes at the end, or maybe even more, to answer the questions that you post in the live chat today. And I will answer the questions I don't get to in a Game Guru forum thread at the end. And you'll find that once the this live broadcast has been turned into a YouTube video and posted on the Game Guru YouTube channel. So once you see that, then go to the Game Guru forum and you'll actually see the thread there with the video recording and of course all the answers to your questions. So that's basically the format. So I'm going to show you the first thing is a terrain load. Now remember last time, I probably mentioned it before, that we're working on the terrain geometry first. You may have seen some demos. Well, we've succeeded and completed in doing the LOD stitching, which is to make sure that when the LOD steps down in terms of a LOD level, so it's using fewer polygons, that there isn't any gaps between those two terrain patches. So we've finished the work on creating those uh, LOD um, level strips. Um, using a pretty decent technique, not not using strips, that's kind of an old technique. This one's kind of manipulating the height data mipmap pixels in order to generate the uh, height maps um, so you never see any of those gaps. So I'm going to switch to a folder and run 007lod.exe, which is code for our prototypes. As you can see here, you've got... Um, a terrain. First of all, I'll just pull out so you can see what's going on. See how the train pops, 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 pops. Those are all the different LOD levels. So this is the furthest distance LOD level. And if we actually zoom a little closer, you see it's pop, 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 all the way down to close. And then you look into the distance, you'll actually see that those poppings are still going on based on camera distance. There's one or two little things that I've noticed. I'm going to feed that back in to Mike, who's slaving away over this terrain system. Thanks very much, Mike. Uh, but on the main, it's great. It's fast, it's optimized, it renders. I'm gonna look at the draw call, see if we can squeeze even more performance out of it. Uh, but most importantly, there's no terrain gaps as you move around and you render fewer polygons in the distance thanks to the LOD system. So we're happy to say that that's done. And then the next thing that we're actually working on is the sculpting and the terrain brushes. So that's been worked on as I speak. And the idea is that we'll be able to fly around and then zoom into a bit of terrain and then raise a hill and flatten a hill and, and, and dig out a trench, all those kind of cool things. And then once that's done and that's stable and solid and fast, then finally we get to go to do the terrain texturing. And the terrain texturing is the bit that hides, see these pops that you see as you move across? Do not worry about that. That's just for us to see that the actual lot is working. When we add the proper terrain textures and the grass and all the layers, then you'll actually not see those pops. It will actually be effectively the same pixel on the screen. Uh, as it transitions, the color will be the same, so you'll never see that pop. It just means that the GPU has less to do as it's rendering fewer polygons as you render the terrain to the distance. So that's the terrain lot demo. Um, I'm just gonna be a little bit cheeky and see if we do have any sound, because I'm going to be thinking about that for another 10 minutes. So, blah, 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 blah. Um, this is the chat, just so I can keep everything's good. No one's really complaining about lack of sound, or they think this is a uh, silent movie, but it all looks good, so we can carry on, hooray. So, the next thing I'd like to talk about is we have a decision to make. Um, um, it's an announcement as well. We are going to start work on support for more VR headsets. And we have a choice to make. Do we go for Steam VR, which locks the software in 
to the Steam client, so you'd need the Steam client unless you go for something like the uh, the HTC Vive Enterprise solution, which gives you maybe an offline install of Steam VR. Or, which the advantage of Steam VR, of course, is it's straight out of the box Steam. It's all configurable through Steam, and it supports a huge number of headsets. The alternative I may have mentioned before is something called OpenXR. It is a uh, an API developed um, by the Kronos Group, and all the major manufacturers are on board with it. And the downside to uh, OpenXR right now is the number of run times that are available. For the longest time, all that was available really for a consumer device was the Windows Mixed Reality. Well, <clears throat> I looked at it recently, in fact, I looked at it this morning, and they now support Oculus Rift and Rift S. Um, and they're hinting at support for the Oculus Quest as well, um, using the OpenXR, because I've found the runtime, if I go to here, this is the Oculus store, and as you can see, they've got a prototype runtime for Oculus. Happy days. Now, here's the thing, it doesn't have support for HTC Vive runtimes at the moment. I've scoured the internet, I couldn't find any information on it, apart from some sort of set piece from HTC saying they are completely open to supporting um, the easiest adoption of blah, 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 blah. But absolutely no information on a runtime. So that's the question. Do we do OpenXR, which means we only write it once, and then eventually when all the runtimes appear, that's it. It will run on everything that we got now and everything that happens in the future. Or, and also, if you do OpenXR, it means your executable can be run anywhere on any Windows 10 machine or above, don't need to use Steam. It will completely independent. But again, as I said, limited headset support via the runtimes available. Steam VR on the hand has more headsets uh, available. It's probably going to be a slightly easier development. We've already had some experience with Steam VR, so those are the advantages. But you are tied to the Steam client, um, so those are our choices. And we're going to we're going to make our mind up in the next couple of uh, days. Probably next week will uh, next Monday we will have decided, and then we get stuck in. So please do post your comments and questions today in this chat. Um, I'd like to have your opinions, what you think. Do you think it's absolutely crazy to support OpenXR right now, or do you think it is the future and you don't mind waiting around? Obviously, people who've got HTC Vibes, I know which one you're going to want us to do. Uh, but the basic announcement is, of course, that, hooray, we are going to focus in on supporting lots of VR headsets for when GameGuru Max gets released. So, nice bit of news there for you. Um, the final thing I want to say before I open it up to some questions and answers and read uh, any things that you've got to ask me is art. Uh, the last time, the Alpha Build 2, you noticed we had a nice cellar with some uh, cupboards, wardrobes, boxes and a, a piece of stale bread and a bottle of milk. Uh, but the thing I really want to um, introduce next into that demo is this guy. <laughs> Ugly customer, ain't it? Um, this is our zombie. So we're going to introduce into the cellar uh, is a zombie. And then we're going to switch the lights really down so you don't know where the zombie is. And then we're going to put you in that room with nothing but a lead pipe or something. And then you've got to survive him. Um, proper scurry. This is a 4K texture. We've already done, I say we, <laughs> a talented artist has created all of the high uh, polygon sculpting uh, shapes, the head, the body, legs, all that kind of stuff. And he just started on the um, the 4K textures for the head, and then he's gonna work his way down. By the time it's finished, it will be rigged, it will be animated with lots of animations. So forget the idea that we just have an idle and a walk. This zombie will do lots of animations. I'll just hint at some of them, the idea that he can be on the floor he, she, or it. I can't figure out what it it is. Uh, but it may be on the floor, you know, eating a rat, and then it will sort of look up, and then it stumble to its feet, and then lurch towards you. Of course, if you've not got a, a light source, then it'll just maybe creep up behind you and then try to eat your brains out. Um, but we're going for quality. We're going for a bit scurry. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, do we have a license to be completely scurry and then freak people out? Um, I don't know. I don't think we need to worry about that. The scurrier the better. We can always censor it a little bit later. Um, but this is, his, <laughs> this is what it looks like. I rather like the idea that he actually doesn't have any eyeballs. Um, it's a bit more desiccated. I like that. So that's a zombie that's going to be roaming around the cellar to begin with and maybe roaming in other parts if the uh, the showcase demo gets bigger, which we, fingers crossed, we would like to do. 
So that's Mr. Zombie. Um, I'm just looking at the clock, trying to be disciplined here, and I'm well on track. I now have best part of four and a bit minutes to answer some questions. So I'm going to switch over to um, the chat window. Hopefully I doesn't get scrolled back down to the bottom. I'm looking for anything with a question mark or a, a question in square brackets. That way I can quickly find out uh, who's got something to ask. So here's a couple of question marks. Random atmospheric music generator being showcased, question mark, lol. <laughs> yeah, uh, the first three broadcasts were pretty amateurish, so I thought I'd go for something a bit more polished. And we'll continue to do that as we create more live broadcasts and more sneak peek videos. You'll find our YouTube channel just getting a little bit nicer and a bit more polished. Um, up until now, it's kind of just been a repository for videos, but I think we could do a lot more with our YouTube presence, uh, starting with some nicer um, introductions in our live broadcasts. I just hope it all worked out. I'm going to play it later on to see if it did. Um, uh, running a book on how much Lee's waffle will take in overtime. <laughs> yeah, I know. I am my own worst enemy. Three minutes left. Uh, is there a Game Guru Discord? Yes, there is. Um, let me just click on it for you. It's that one. So I don't want to give you that huge, massive number, but there it is. It exists. Game Guru. And you can talk about all kinds of things. And there's some awesome stuff going on. You really do need to check it out. I mean, check out Avon Moses. Uh, forklift truck using real vehicle physics <laughs> absolutely awesome uh, so yeah you can definitely check that out um, but do it in your own time please don't leave just yet I want to carry on answering all questions so let's see if we can skim through um, uh, da -da 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 -da, on the forums take as long discord dinky dink will the weapons be same as the ones in GG classic no they'll be better <laughs> you can copy over your old weapons into Max manually and those weapons will continue to work hooray uh, but the opportunity with Max is we are now supporting VR virtual reality which means you can't have a gun in the traditional sense if you had a gun in the traditional sense in VR it would stick out your belly button so you need to be able to hold that gun in your hand as the controller moves your gun moves as you press the trigger on your controller the gun fires so there's differences which means we have to do a lot of different things differently what if say for example you've got a hand and an arm you know we've not yet decided we need to run a prototype see if that works but you need to see the hand and the arm all moving around holding the weapon as you're waving the controller around so there is a lot of things to look at there and of course if it's all successful yes game guru max weapons will be better but we're gonna to have to prototype that so look out for future alphas and future videos to show uh, how we're getting on in that area but yeah we are going to do some new nice and they'll actually look nice as well because we, we can use higher textures and then use the best uh, features of the new graphics engine as well um yeah <laughs> hello I'm not, I'm not going to make it down I am I'm about one minute left uh once the train is done will there be a demo like the seller demo yes absolutely with textures and grass and all kinds of wonderful things um da -da -da -da, just spinning through do you plan on a fishing system no nope, no plans to add a fishing system no plans to add mini games you do have lower scripts so you can do that if you like what full screen shaders will be in use full screen shaders well uh, uh, check out the wicked engine it has its own website check it out see what it does we'll be using the majority of those but all these full screen shaders you currently have in classic those should migrate over in terms of its functionality but we may add a few extra things on such as the choice of anti-alias from uh, msaa fxaa or uh, temporal anti-aliasing things like that so there will be some additions to what you'll be able to do with full screen shaders model importing max what is planned uh the plan is to use the latest version of Asimp for the importing of the models those get converted into an internal format and then those are rendered through the wicked engine so think about things like fbx gl fx uh legacy support for x files we need that for backwards compatibility obj files all the things that you want um and we'll make the import process nice and easy so you can apply textures and it recovers textures and finds them if they're somewhere near the model estimate on the next alpha yep yeah, middle of june so keep an eye out for that. Um, think of something like the third week in June. Um, so expect something like that. Question. Lee, can we discuss the VR preference on the forums also? A VR preference? Uh, we can just discuss it on the forums if you like. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, 
and I actually anticipated there will be a lot of discussion. Steam versus OpenX, uh, which is the best. We are absolutely going to have a nice long discussion about that in the Game Guru forums. On the seller demo, can you bug logging if it does not run? Yes, that's one of the next things going into the alpha because there has been one or two crashes, and I do want to track those down very, very early. Um, I've already talked to the um, the author of Wicked Engine. He has a couple of ideas. I just need to chase those out and use a log file to try and find out if it is that case or not. Another question, what debug features does Game Guru Max have? Can you draw debug lines on what other debugging is there? No serious massive plans for all this debugging lines that you might draw over. Just think all the stuff in Classic, that also gets moved over to Max. So at the minimum, you'll have those. Obviously, logging. Um, but in terms of things like, I'd like to see like physics debugging, where you see the physics shapes overlaid onto the actual objects. I think that'd be pretty useful at a glance to see if you can import and then edit the physics meshes a little bit better. Uh, another question, what format will it support for importing custom assets? Yep, yeah, see above for that answer. Um, I mean included weapons won't change. Included weapons, there are, you know, Game Guru Max doesn't exist yet. There are no weapons in Max. Um, there are weapons in Classic. So you won't see the Classic weapons in Max. There will be nothing in Max except maybe some sample templates. Um, the idea for Max is we want you to import your own stuff. So I've just glanced down. I do love the sound of my own voice. Those questions took me three minutes over the mark, but I don't mind. I always allow myself that extra five minutes, provided I don't go over 20 minutes, I think I've done myself a good service. So as I said, rest of the answers you'll find on the forums. Um, but without further ado, just to make sure I don't have a one minute goodbye, uh, thanks for listening. Watch out next week for a sneak peek and then the week after another live broadcast. This will now be put up on YouTube, so check out the Game Guru forums for a link to that and all of these answers with proper punctuation and full stops. Uh, so until then, uh, thanks for listening and I'll see you next time. Now let's see if we can click the right buttons. <laughs>